Welcome to the class number four for the baby lock shirt shirts. On this class, we'll cover the chain and cover stitches that are available on the current models in the Triumph and Accolade, as well uh, as the uh, cover stitch only machine. And then on the past models, it will be uh, uh, applicable for Ovation, Evolution, Evolve, and Evolve Wave. On a quick reference guide, on those eight red machines, there is a section that shows all the uh, cover and chain stitch settings. And as of all the current models, they have all color coded the top of it. So anything related for the chain and cover are in the gold colors. It also follows to the machine. So any settings that are applicable for the chain and cover, they also have a gold color um, lettering on the machine. So that was about image on uh, this picture I have from the Triumph. It's very similar uh, to Ovation and also the Accolade Evolve and the past models. I put on the right side also some images from the Babylock cover stitch only machine. Uh, there's a machine that all it does is chain and cover stitches. And uh, they don't have a quick reference guide for it. So I copied some pictures from the manual, so in the settings for the, uh, the chain stitch, the triple cover, and one of the narrow cover stitches. So all those same stitches can be done also on that machine. So, but I'm concentrating on this class mostly for the A-thread machines, uh, but then uh, some of the notes I do indicate that uh, this, uh, some settings are not applicable for the cover only. So this, cl this class will apply for that one too. Uh, the set for the cover stitch machine on the eight thread machines will again, as always, go through the checklist first. So on this one, we will uh, put uh, uh, the needles, and I'm starting this class with the triple cover. So it's kind of starting from the bottom of that uh, quick reference guide, and eventually we'll go on to the chain stitch uh, on this one too. So triple cover will have three chain needles, uh, the C1, C2, and C3. And the overlock needles will take those needles out. And in this case, as a reminder, these needles need to be those cover needles, which are the ELX705 type, because those needles have the groove in the back as well as in the front. So then, uh, if you use any other needles, you most likely will get some skip stitches. So this is important to use those needles. And they only come on size 8012 and 9014. So we'll put three of those needles onto the C1, C2, and C3 locations. As for stitch length, uh, on that one, uh, they have a range, but I would like to put for my first exercise, it's somewhere around two and a half or the three millimeter length. And use the standard side. Really shouldn't matter too much, but I normally use the standard side. So I have that one more stitch finger in there on that uh, stitch blade to keep a flatter surface. Well then, Several settings do not apply for this cover stitch. These are overlock only stitches. The length is one of those things we use on both sides. But the width, the stitch selector and wave, those don't matter where they are, so um, they don't apply for this stitch. But now we're going to be using two other knobs. One of the ones is a chain needle tension, and then other one is a chain loop tension. Well, on these ones, the needle tension uh, is the one on the uh, on the left side of the machine. It goes uh, numbers uh, kind of I think from one to nine, and the normal ra range on that one is four to six. So let's start at five and and then we'll do a test. Because if I have a heavier thread, I may have to lower the tension. Heavy uh, then thinner thread may be tighten it. Then the chain loop of tension. This image I have taken. Uh, this one is from Ovation which it is very similar to uh, Evolution, um, Accolade, uh, Evolve and Evolve Wave. Uh, the triumph on this one has a number. So when I call my machine, I will show the number that is needed for that one. Well, a different models are a little bit different. But that is the knob on the right side of the machine. And if it uh, is the machine that says cover or chain, put it where the uh, little uh, cold color line is saying cover, line up that, that little notch that is built on a machine bed. Then on the rest of the settings uh, for the, uh, the chain loop, the upper loop selector, we need to have this one down. This is the first time we're going to do this one down. So lower that little lever, so to lift it from the right to left, 
and then rotate your hand wheel towards you so that you'll see that upper loop are kind of going inside the machine and getting disengaged. We need to do that one so that uh, when we put the sewing table on a machine, that upper loop is not going to be hitting the sewing table. So this is the only time we will be using this lever in down position when we do a cover and chain stitches only. And then this time, no, we're not going to be using the knife, so we need to uh, lock the blade. So rotate a little knob or do the lock position. So the knife totally disappears under the machine bed. And then we're going to take the knife cover out and put the sewing table in. And as for the subsidiary looper, that's only used with the two threads searching on the overlock side, so it doesn't really matter where it is. So after we have done all that setting, then we're going to thread the machine. And as always on baby lock searchers, it doesn't matter what order we thread it, we can thread the needles first or the looper first. I will go to threading more on uh, detail on my machine, and especially when I go around this area on the loop uh, on the loop of threading, that is where I get the most questions. So I will go that on my machine. Um, then I list it on the left side on the just to kind of summary of the settings, and those little red stars, asterisk signs in there, just uh, indicate that those settings are not applicable if you have the cover stitch only machine because some of these notes will apply for that one. All the uh, exercises will apply for the cover stitch machine too, but those uh, some of those settings are only on the eight thread machines. I'm in here in my in my uh, Triumph searcher, and on a quick reference guide, um, as I mentioned earlier on that. Uh, uh, section as uh, all the settings for the chain cover stitches on the eight thread machines have this gold color, which also runs around the machine by the, uh, any time that we have something that is referred for the cover stitch or chain stitch, they have gold coloration when all the uh, overlock side is green. So that's just kind of little thing that anything that is overlock side is pretty much listed in the green colors. So we are going to be using this space and it starts on the uh, in the, on, on the chain uh, stitches, then it goes to the na uh, narrow cover stitches, the white cover and triple cover. So I'm starting from the bottom where it says triple cover stitch. And the first part on this one is that we would need to put the needles. We have uh, uh, three chain needles on this one, nothing overlock. So I'm going to go and uh, uh, unthread my machine first because I was doing some uh, decorative overlock stitching last, so I have pretty heavy threads in the loopers. So I will just open the covers and easy way to take the threads out. Because one way is that I could cut the threads in the top and close the doors and run it, run it off. On other way is I still like to uh, clip these threads in the top. And then when my presser foot is up, if I take them just away from those uh, 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 thread delivery area, and I can pretty much just pull those threads through. So they come out as easily that way. So multiple ways, you can run them through. You just have to do, uh, close the doors then. And on the Triumph and Accolade also, you'd have to uh, lower your presser foot because they, those are two machines that won't run with the presser foot down. So I took all those threads out because then I can uh, go ahead and unthread the, uh, change the needles. So I'm gonna lift the needles all the way up first. And I'll take the foot out of the way because it just gives me a little bit more access for that one. And on this case, um, I had one standard needle in the machine. So let me take this one out. I had a real Microtex needle in the machine. But when I'm using the cover stitch side, now I need to definitely go and use the right type of the needles. These are the ELX705 and I have them from the package that came with the machine. And then also I have a Smets package, but it says ELX705. Class A is another good brand that we also use a lot. So these, these are the needles that are needed for the overlocks uh, on the so cover stitch side, because the cover stitch needles require to have the little groove in the front and the back. So I have three of these needles. And other way also to get it easier access for the needles is uh, instead of just to taking the foot out, but also lower the knife. We'll have to lower it anyway for this one, so uh, that will just kind of help to get started. And uh, I could use my little handy tool for the putting the needles uh, one by one. And that is that is really this kind of handy because we have three needles, but I'm going to try to be 
clever and it may not work but I'm gonna put try to put three needles at the same time so I'm just gonna have the flat side in the back and then I have those screws a little bit loose and here we go three needles at one time so that's just another way to put the needles in if you uh, do multiples at one time kind of lay them up between your fingers the flat side in the back and then put the tips onto the holes where the needles will be going and straight up and important again is that the needles are all the way up so that you'll see that little tip of that or actually it's called the butt of the needle that that is showing up in this little window and these needles are all staggered so the most left needle is furthest down and then the most right, uh, right one is furthest up so they are all staggered so it is important that they go that way so now I've got my needles as the um, quick reference guide says well then the stitch length um, that is the uh, same knob as with the overlock machine and I'm going to put mine about three at the moment we have a range we could have any we really can use any setting needed but I'm going to use the three kind of halfway there now with stitch selector and wave selector these they don't matter those ones are only used with the overlock side that's what the, those green lettering shows on the stitch selector the wave selector those ones are only used there at uh, the uh, blade I often uh, still want to make, uh, have it in here in a wider position really doesn't matter where it is I guess but I kind of put it there um, but then we have two other knobs chain needle tension and chain loop of tension these are the only tension dials we have in the machine uh, on the most left beside where the needles are there is a dial and my machine it in here I had at the moment uh, almost to six because the te technique I was using the last I'm going to start at five um, it is like on any tension dial bigger your number tighter your tension so heavier threads you would have a looser tension and then a thinner thread may be a bit tighter or depending on the technique a bit but let's start that one at five and then on the uh, on this other uh, knob the chain loop of tension that one is the knob on my machine on the right hand side mine is kind of in front of on the right hand side ovation um, really all, all the other a thread machines I should say ovation accolade um, evolve uh, evolve wave uh, evolution all of those ones it just says uh, 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 in this one it says cover so the, that knob is more on the side uh, and you have to rotate it so that you have it on the cover stitch side my machine uh, and that's the only one that has this style with the numbers and it was moved in the front it says between zero to one so I'll put it somewhere between zero to one maybe half but again uh, if I have really heavy threads um, I can then always uh, change the setting actually I was doing something very very heavy threads uh, over the weekend and I did not even use the tension area this machine has a little bypass loop so I totally bypassed the tension I didn't even go to the tension on that one so that will be the next setting so uh, on my machine it uh, is, a, is a number on uh, all the others it just would say cover but then very important uh, before we thread the machine we need to make sure we'll put that upper loop, loop of selector down and that one is the knob and you have to have your doors open to see it and anytime we have thread in the overlock side even with the combination stitches anytime there's a thread in the overlock side this needs to be up but if we do cover stitch only or chain stitch only now, then we need to make sure it, it, we put it down and before I thread it I'm going to do one other thing I'm going to rotate the hand wheel because what this one does is after I rotate the hand wheel a uh, couple uh, revolutions it will drop this upper loop because I can't have this upper loop of poking up on the top of the surface otherwise it will hit, hit our uh, little sewing table so I rotate the hand wheel and there we go my upper loop is just kind of locked in place so now my upper loop is not going to be doing anything so we needed to do that one first put it in a down position and then I and I then rotate the hand wheel again important when I go from cover stitch or change stitch back to the overlock side before I do the threading I need to make sure I will put this one up rotate the hand wheel to get this um, upper looper engaged so that that threads will go in the right spot 
So that's again important why we go through the checklist first and then do the threading. So okay, so I have left, left that one down and I only locked my blade. We don't want to have the knife to cut our fabric this time. And then we need to change to a sewing table. The last one subsidiary looper. It doesn't matter where it is. We're not using it. It's on the overlock side. So I leave that there. But the sewing table and that one is the other piece that came with the, the other eight red machines. Uh, on the Ovation and Triumph, it is a really large one. All the other ones, it is just about, I, I'd say about, if I cover this part, it's a smaller piece. But what it does is, when I close this door, I don't want to have this knife cover to be on my way because I won't have a flat surface. So I will take the uh, door out. And on these ones, there is sort of like a little um, uh, uh, engraved or a little uh, raised lines so if I put my kind of my finger on that one push it down gently and pull it out this cover comes out easily and then the way it came out this part is the same on all the all the ones so this will go in the same way so I will just uh, take this one I have to lift the left this bit and it will close and now when I close it up I have a nice sewing table so that's all our checklist. So I'm going to go for the threading next. So what I will do is I'll move the camera a bit and then we'll get onto that uh, th threading on the lupus and needle. Here are a couple of close-up pictures uh, of Om Triumph and then also some uh, drawings that might help uh, for the for the, uh, locating this chain needle tension and the chain looper tension. Um, all the machines, all the eight thread searchers, we have a dial on the left hand side of the machine and that is a tension dial for for the needle threads and the three slots on the front and on the machine those are for those guides where the needle threads will go for the chain cover side and there's even the uh, gold letters one two three for the cover and chain needle threads and that is the take up lever part this little silver part when in the overlock side, it is that white plastic area. So we need to make sure that when we thread it, we'll go over that take up lever. On the chain looper, um, I have the uh, photographs taken of Triumph, and then I have a picture of Ovation manual. Uh, the Ovation and all the other than uh, the Triumph, the, uh, the chain uh, tension dial looks a little bit different. The dial is pointing towards on the right hand side of the machine and the little metal bar is right against the machine bed in there so when we thread it it's important that we get the thread from right towards left so kind of from the outside the machine towards in the machine and then we'll take it behind behind this little metal uh, uh, guide and then over the take up lever and, and into the threading tubes and this image shows uh, the same part that is on Triumph. So it's a little bit different on this one. So um, the guide is now pointing towards the machine instead of a uh, flat against the machine on the, on the right side. And then instead of the dial being on the side, it is in the front and it has numbers. Uh, all other machines, the dial says cover and then it says uh, chain. So depending on the areas, uh, it is a tension dial. So more towards the chain side you go, tighter your tension is. On the Triumph, it is numbers. So the numbers go all the way from zero up to, I'm not even sure how far, they never got that far. But most times I use them just kind of in the beginning parts on this one. The Triumph also has a little uh, bypass uh, cover in there. So there's the slot that uh, will go in the tension. If I want to bypass it, there's a little hook that is attached on this last guide. In that case, I could just take it straight from the, uh, the guide and onto this hook. So I could bypass my tension totally if I have really thick threads. So that's just hopefully some of these pictures will help. I'm going to thread the looper first. But as on all the baby lock searches, it doesn't matter what order we thread. I just move the camera on the right side of the machine so you can see the uh, the looper threading area. On a chain, we only have one looper, so it's called a chain cover looper. And we will change the chain looper here. And I put the, my spooler thread on this uh, loop, uh, position and then I uh, put it on antenna. And then for the thread, 
uh, I need to uh, make sure that my pressure foot is up on the time when I thread the tension area, but it's kind of a little bit awkward on the triumph because uh, so the lever is right beside it. So I often lower part in the beginning, and then when I actually go through the tension area, that's when I lift it back up. But there's a hole. Uh, triumph, the, uh, this uh, guide is going to facing towards me. All the other a thread searchers that is facing uh, going to against the machine. So on those searchers, you'll get your thread and you want to put it from right to left and just kind of push this way or mine is goes front to back. And no matter which, mess, which way this little um, guide was, whether it was kind of folded flat or this way, the thread needs to go behind. So that is very, very often I see on those other searchers, all the, uh, uh, all the other a thread searchers that the people want to go it in the front. And then it gets wrapped around on this uh, metal piece. We don't want that one. That's too much tension. So I need to make sure, no matter which way that your little uh, circle is pointing, that you take your thread on the back and then behind that little silver uh, guide. And then it will go over the tension area. So now I'm going to lift the pressure foot up before I go over that tension area. And then there's a little hook underneath. So it's very simple to thread. That's the only thing that I always try to remind people that make sure that that thread, when it goes through, whether it goes from right to left or front to back, you need to go them behind it so that we don't have that thread wrapped around this uh, metal piece. And then, of course, I need to put my searcher to the threading position and rotate the hand wheel to engage the threading ports. And I will need to take quite the length because my thread has to go all the way and again, it is a, a C for the chain looper, and it is a gold color, as all the color coding. And as long as I have a nice clean cut, I just keep my edge of the thread, and I put about half an inch to inch inside the hole, and then I have long enough tail, and I push the button. Well, it looks like I don't see where the thread went, because that looper is the shy one. He's pointing inside the machine, so we don't see that thread at the moment. But then I, I'm going to move the camera for the other side of in here, and then I'll show you where that is. I'm on my uh, left side of the machine, so uh, and I opened my sewing table cover so I can open this uh, front cover of this uh, searcher. Uh, because there's a little tray, and hopefully it's going to show us in the camera. There's a little tray that my thread has just pulled up. So I see that there's the little uh, loop, loop of thread. Well, I had put quite a bit extra slack on it, so I have way too much. So in this case, all I do is I will just use the cutter on the back, cut the thread on that one, and put this thread tail back inside. If I barely had enough, if I just barely seen it, I want to pull out enough. And I usually always, if I, I just always take this thread tail, cut it with the cutter, put it back in, because that cuts it in the right size, right length. Um, because if I have it too long, it may kind of catch up a bit. Or if I, I, I don't, if I have it too little, it's not going to start stitching. So that's what I normally do. So it's just to get it through the threading, open the side cover, find it from there little tray, pull it up, cut it, and put it back in there. And we can close the door there. And then as for needle threading, um, there's a quick, quick reference guide going to show that the needles go. There we go. Needles go on, on that uh, the areas in here, on the tension areas. The picture on that uh, quick reference guide is always very small. Just as a reminder, your manual has that same picture and all the stitches, all these stitches that we've been going through in other classes too, we have a much larger image of that, uh, that threading guide. So we can see that on this machine, that is how I threaded the looper. And then we'll go for the threading on the needles. So I'll move my camera again. At the chain needles, they'll be going on these little narrow slots. One, two, three. The same order as we had the needles. One, two, three. It doesn't matter really which order they go. I tend to go backwards. I often tend to go three to one because it, for me, I get le then less tangled up if I do that way. So I have set up on my search already on the top of it. I have the three spools of thread and then I've taken the thread over the antenna and then I will start from the most uh, right needle, that is the needle three. So in this case, I will take my thread like it was a dental floss between my fingers 
and I will lay it on this. Again, reminder, I lifted my presser foot back up. So we go through the tension area, always have your presser foot up on that point. So I'll take my thread, lay it on that third slot, and then there's a behind this little uh, hooks. And depending on the machine, the shapes of these ones are a little bit different. So you may need to look your operations manual for that one, but they all have little hooks behind. So when I go on mine, when I go and kind of pull this thread towards right, you hear a little click. They hopefully hear a little click. I know that, that that now my thread is caught behind there. And then I'm going to go behind this little metal bar and then over this metal take-up level cover. Again, this is another one I need to point out because uh, very often, this is a question I've got many, many times, especially if you haven't used the cover stitch side for a while, uh, and then easily kind of tend to miss this one. So if I don't go it over that take-up level, if I just would go straight down, uh, my tr uh, t stitches will look absolutely horrible. It's kind of like in a sewing machine. If you are uh, missing the take-up level, you'll have a bit of a mess in the machine. So important again to go over that little take up level, not straight down. So if, if you see your threads going straight down here, that is what it meant. You missed that part. Again, sorry to emphasize some of the things, but that's a question I got many, many times. And now it will be thread into a needle. So I'm going to, my, my machine has the uh, air needle threader. So I will just leave my thread uh, on the right side here. So when I get into the, in front of the machine, I will then use the needle threader for that one. So then I'll take my number two, same way I will lay it on the middle slot, go behind and your heel will snap. There we go. And then I will go the same way. They kind of share, share that same path over the take up lever. And this one I leave in the middle of, middle here. And lastly for the right needle, I go behind again, that will snap behind the metal bar and over the take up lever and I will leave that one on to the left side. So I've got my threads part on, uh, on the tension area. So now I can lower my presser foot. So I have a tension on it and it's easier to thread the needles. Okay, so on, this, on my machine, I will just uh, pull that uh, needle threader unit out. And because I'm using the uh, chain side of the needles, I will need to make sure, sorry, uh, that one, I need to make sure that I will flip my lever to be a chain cover side. Because if I thread an overlock side, I need to have it there. Otherwise, my needle, thread work, needle threader won't work. So again, that was first thing. <clears throat> and then I will uh, get, we can get this one at the time. I'll get, now I'm going to go order one, two, three. Sorry to give my hands in front of the camera. I'm going to get it behind that little hook. And... I think I have a pretty clean edge. I will just point this thread towards the eye of that first needle and push the button. There we go, that's that threaded. And then I will do the middle one. This is way too long, let me cut that shorter. Again, as long as I have a nice clean cut and I could use that little extra guide that, uh, card that comes with the machine I just often do it this way. There we go. That's my number two. And then number three. Again, I'm going to just cut it a little bit shorter. I'm going to awkward to do on the side and trying to keep my hands away from the camera too. There we go. And then I will just pull the lever back and here's my needles ready. So now my machine is all threaded and ready to go. So I just put my machine to searching position and close all the doors. Lift the presser foot up. And then I need the foot. Well, I have again options. I could use the standard foot that came with the machine. That will definitely work. Other options would be to use the clear foot. Or then I could use the open toe. Or then we can also use the chain cover foot, which is a much narrower one. Really any of these ones will work. But because we haven't really used this one other than I did little technique Tuesday tip use, uh, using this one on the things it wasn't designed for, putting the uh, beads on, but this time I'm going to use it where it's designed for. So let me put that foot in the machine. And again, one little tip in here is that these needles on the chain side, they go very, very low. So we don't have as much space on, on that one as we have on the overlock side. So uh, again, putting the foot from the left side under the uh, 
another needle other foot behind there makes it easy to snap it in if i try to go on the front to back i'm gonna hit those needles and then i'm gonna take those red tails out so i'm ready to go and do our first exercise um i, I put a picture in in here about uh, some of the feet that uh, we can use with the cover stitch uh, we'll, we'll be using a lot of other specialty feet also, but just for ordinary piecing or the ordinary seaming, uh, we could use, of course, the standard foot that comes with the machine. We could also use the clear foot, open toe, and then this one little narrow one, that is a chain cover foot. So that is another one that I'll be using uh, uh, when I do some exercises, I'll use this one also. So now these are some of the kind of basic feet that we can, we can use. Um, and then on this image, I also uh, put an image on a sewing table from the Triumph Searcher. Uh, that we have, they have holes. All the other ones, we only have two holes. The Triumph has the, a cover that has four holes. This large sewing table can be added also to Ovation, but not to other machines. For the first sample, um, I'll be stitching a hem. And the reason why this stitch is sometimes called cover hem, because it is often used on the hemming on t-shirts and especially knit fabrics. But we can use it to hem also woven fabrics. So on my sample that I will uh, sew on the line machine, um, I have a little knit fabric that I have pressed the hem under. And then I'm using in this one the triple cover. We could use the narrow cover or white cover on this one too. And most times you see it that way. Sports very often see on this one. So I'll, I'll demonstrate this one with the machine. We could just eyeball it, or then a really, really handy thing is, is to use the fa fabric guide. So I will demonstrate that on my machine. But just one important note, um, the, and I'll, I'll, I'll be repeating that later on too, but uh, we need to make sure that when we start stitching with the cover stitch, we need to always start on the fabric. We can go off the edge, uh, do a chain, but we need to start on the fabric. It's a little bit different than on your uh, overlock side of the machines. The overlock, it doesn't care if I have fabric to, even when I start it. With the cover stitch, we need to have uh, some fabric underneath the needles when we start stitching. So what could we use this stitch for? Um, it is like um, several of the stitches, we really have uh, two right sides. Uh, and this side, the needle side would give us three straight lines because we have a triple cover. And then on the side, we have the looper that makes a little kind of a serpentine kind of look on underneath. I'm going to use this first exercise, this stitch for just to hem in a t-shirt or hemming any other, any, anything. <laughs> I often use on a sportswear because if I do most of the t-shirts that we look, we either see a narrow cover or the uh, white cover, but not the triple. But the sportswear, you often see the triple cover. And so in this case, um, uh, they, we had to, because we, the needles go on the right side, we need to fold the fabric underneath. So we, I have pressed on this little piece of a knit fabric. And again, I'm pretending that this is my hem. So it is on that stretchier side of the uh, knit fabric. So I have folded my edge under and gave a little press. Uh, but I need to stitch it now from the top side because that way is that um, cover stitch will cover the hem. And that is the other name for this stitch is a cover hem because it is often used to uh, do a hemming. Well, one of the things before I do anything on here on aligning, I need to uh, can remind that cover stitches uh, and the chain stitches, we need to start on a fabric. Uh, it's a little bit different than your ordinary overlock sides that we tend to just normally kind of thread the machine and even run a short tail just before we put the fabric. Do not do that with the cover stitch. Cover stitch requires fabric to start. And usually before I do any of the regular stitching on my item, I will be, I'll just take a little piece of a scrap fabric and do a test run. Partly I want to just uh, see that uh, is my uh, tension because this one, we have those two tensions if I need to change them. But also more importantly, I want to get that loop or thread back on, on the top side of the fabric. We're not going to use the hand wheel for that one. I'm just going to uh, sew on a piece of fabric. So I just took a little piece of a, a scrap fabric, put it underneath the presser foot, lower my presser foot down, and then start stitching on this one. Just a little test. Um, we can 
go off the edge of the fabric. Most of the cover stitch, other brand cover stitch machines, you have to stop on the fabric on the end as well. But on a baby lock searches, we, we can run off the edge of the fabric. The manual tells that there are a couple things that will help. Uh, I don't always have to confess, I don't always do it that way. Um, I tend to just sometimes just go off. But if I do it really proper way, I should lengthen my stitch length all the way to four uh, on this point. And then I should also loosen my uh, the tension, which is already uh, going to loop aside very loose, but I should loosen my needle tensions a little bit too. So I'm going to about two at this moment. And then I'm just going to let it stitch out. See, I'm not pulling it back because if I pull it back with the cover stitch, you hear a little ding, 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 kind of a bad sounds. Uh, it's not most likely going to hurt anything. What happens, I believe, is that my needles are hitting the looper. So I'm just going to just let it run fast. So that way I can do that little chain behind. So, yep, we are okay to do a chain behind. We just uh, can't start on, uh, uh, on, the, on the air. So now I'm going to put my tension back to five where it was for the needles. And then lift my press of my needle up, my press of foot up, so I can kind of snip that thread, thread tail out of the way. So a couple things I wanted to or do in this one. See how those my needle threads are kind of all be tangled up, but also my looper thread, because it was inside the machine, it was still kind of tangled up on this stitch. I want to get them all on the top side, and that allowed me to also check to see that everything looks good on my stitching. And I'm, I needed to put my stitch length back to three because I lengthened it to four for that chaining part. But see, it did the chain just fine. I didn't have any trouble going off the edge. But uh, it's just that I important is don't pull it like you would tend to do often with the, uh, with the overlock side. Well, how do I then get this one lined up? Because I could use my notches on, on the foot for the aligning so that I'll get that stitch going on the right spot. I also have some other markings on my stitch play that I put the stickers, kind of worn out a bit now, but, but I put my little sticker in here that will allow me to do some. But we have other helpers, and this is what, one that I always use when I'm doing a hemming on a t-shirt or any, any item that I need to hem. It's a fabric guide. And this is one of these ones that you need to make sure that you get the right model one. Because the Ovation and Triumph, they have this large of five inch space. Uh, we have a different kind of a fabric guide for that one. And this is my fabric guide. Uh, on the, all the other a thread searchers, it's called a fabric guide too. But uh, it, it is a different shape. And this is one of the parts that you can't mix and match. There are all the feet and other attachments we can mix and match for between any a thread searchers and also with, the, I believe, with all the uh, cover stitch models too. But this is a unique one for the, uh, the Ovation and Triumph. All our a thread searchers came with two little screws, which in this case I could use these ones too, because the part that I'm going to be using, my hem is not going to go anywhere near these knobs. But this specific guide came with extra special kind of little bit smaller screws. So I'll use the I will use this one this time, even though I could use those white ones. Uh, uh, on the um, other than the Triumph and Novation, you'll be using the white ones. So there um, we have a couple of holes in the and the stitch plate in the machine. Um, my machine has a, uh, the the, the uh, sewing table that we have four holes. Ignore the front ones. The ovation, the, uh, the standard sewing table, only has those two, one, two in the back. But you can get the replacement one. And towards the end of this class, I will show a binder, bias binder that I need to use these other holes. But this one, I have little holes. And now you see there's a little slot. So I can adjust that one. This specific fabric guide came with a little uh, adjustment guide that I could line up my needle exactly on that uh, zero position if I wanted to. I'm just going to eyeball at the moment. I just put the zero with my center needle. But again, I'm not really using the measurements. I'm just using the guide. So mine is not that critical. I just finger tighten. If this was a real t-shirt, I would put them with a little knob in a, a screwdriver. Well, now what I'd like to have is that stitch to go over that raw edge. That's why it's called cover hem, because it covers the hem. Because I can't see it this way. So what I'll do for my lining up, 
I'm going to put it underneath my presser foot wrong side up. And that way I can have my most left needle to kind of go over. My seam may not be pressed equally exactly, but I'll have it going over kind of just the, that, that left side of this edge. And then I'll, I'll move my guide. And this one has a little flip. I will lock it in place. So now I know the right distance. So I can flip my fabric right side up. And again, reminder, you need to start on the fabric. So I will place my fabric under. And then I'll just keep this guide. So now I'm not looking at the needles or the foot. I'll be just watching the edge of the guide and guide the fabric that way. One quick reminder on here is that, that if, uh, especially sometimes you saw some of this really light, like this is a very flimsy knit, this green one. Um, if it looks like it's not moving in there, feels like it's stuck. This is the time stop right away. I kind of uh, really try to emphasize stop, 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 because uh, further, if it is not moving, it was just building a bigger lump of threads there. Uh, the stitch fingers on a cover stitch side, they don't have as much space behind to get the fabric away from there. So if it feels like it's not moving, you need to stop right that time and uh, uh, clear the mess and then maybe uh, lengthen your stitch length a little bit or put a little stabilizing. But like mine, I can see it's moving, I'm okay. But that's a reminder. Uh, on the cover stitch side is especially important that if you look like your fabric stuck, you need to stop right away because it's not going to clear itself, it's just going to make the mess bigger. And then one thing you're going to start noticing, my fabric is starting to pull a bit because I'm sewing on my stretchy part of fabric. Again, I, if this was a real t-shirt, I would have done a test and known already that I need to have my differential feet set up to 1.3 on this one. But that you're going to show how it would happen on, on this one if I don't have it. So I'll put my differential feet to 1.3. Again, the quick reference guide doesn't tell me about that one because they didn't know what fabric I was going to be sewing on this one. So let's see if we have a better looking seam this time. In the stitch length, I guess I'll lose my tension. I can run off the head. You can tell that I don't always do that one. So here we have again, I should have <laughs> that's not the best looking seam on this fabric. I should really have had my uh, differential feet to be maybe 1.5 on this one because I didn't do a test. Okay, I have set up my fabric. Uh, under the uh, needles and I changed to the clear foot this time because I did my previous sample using this narrower foot but the, uh, I think this my fabric was just a flimsy one so it was kind of a still punching up a bit so I'm going to use the wider foot for that uh, just to see if we have a better result this time so I have still my uh, stitch length at three and uh, and then I, I low lowered my pressure foot pressure a little bit too put my differential feet to 1.3 so I think I got a pretty nice seam this time. So that wider foot helped on this case because this was a little bit flimsier knit. But it is still a stretchy seam and again I, my, my kite was, I was kiting on the side a bit, I, my kite wasn't exactly in the right spot but uh, uh, that will be all right because this wouldn't unravel anyway. If I have too much and partly in here because my fabric wasn't pressed exactly even but I could trim some of this out if I wanted to, but it's not gonna ravel. So here's my first sample. So just using the, uh, the triple cover to hem a knit fabric. 